That would've been good. What, what was the point of the non-parametric? When you, when you use the TI, you're running parametric tests. What's the deal with non-parametric? What don't you have to do? And we only, we've only done this conversationally in this class. We've only done this conversationally in this class. What have we done in this class? Whenever we start data, sometimes I make a graph of the data. I'll do it again today. Why do I do that? Why do I do that? Make it a graph of the data. So you see if it's, it's normally distributed, Natalie. Thank you. Yes, it is any outliers. What don't non-parametrics care about? Whether the data is normal or whether it has outliers. It just says, I don't, I'm not going to make any assumptions about the data whatsoever. Here's my assumption that there's a, was it a 25%? I think that was the rate from the, you're right. 25%. Yeah, because it was supposed to be equally distributed between the, the winter, the spring, the summer, and the fall. So if you've got 25% seizure rates, they 20, if you've got, excuse me, you have uniformly distributed seizure rates, because, oh, my goodness, I got some stat allergies going. I got to itch myself. <laughs> We've got, sorry. Hey, I'm here all week. So uh, when you've got uniform distributions, you've got a 25%. There's no reason to assume anything about that. Just let it let it display itself in Excel. <laughs> Dancing music, very nice. Let it display itself in Excel. But look what happened. As soon as you ran it like a thousand times, what showed up? What showed up? The bell shape showed up anyway. Why? Give me three words that rhyme with central gimmick. Fearsome. Yes. It's got to show up, doesn't it? It has to show up. As soon as you start sampling, that bell has to show up. Which leads me to the natural question is why don't we do all the tests like you did that last one on your, uh, your take-home? And I think that's the direction that statistics is heading. Non-parametric stats are used all over the place in the world. It's just that academics quite, haven't quite caught up with it. So I, I sneak them in from time to time, like here, your project on Thursday when you analyze the, 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 oil, the oil spills from, from BP. Just ways to deal with data that doesn't disturbing. fit. Those are disturbing? Yes. They, we thought added. we did it wrong. Yeah. Sorry? You thought, because the number was so big? Yeah. Yeah. What's amazing about it, and what, what, what Jess and Beth are talking about is the, the values you get for that project that you'll turn on Thursday. I gave, in the footnote in the last page, I gave, a little, uh, I gave a, little, a little nod to the size of the number. And I said, and even if you look at the largest possible value on that confidence interval, it's still less than a quarter of what the U.S. uses every day in this country, which is kind of staggering to think about. And I learned this relatively recently. It's also less than what leaches into the ocean on a yearly basis already. Natu oil naturally leaches into the ocean all, all year long from, you know, from underground you know, aquifers, whatever, not aquifers, I guess oil first. That's a word. I mean, just, it happens. Things leach into the ocean naturally. I was talking to somebody about this, about like leaching, leaching organic substances. I mean, we think about leaching, we think about like carcinogenic and toxic substances. Well, I mean, oil's a natural substance, but it does leach. I mean, 75 or something percent of the earth is covered in water. It seems to stand the reason a big chunk of that would be oil fishers. So oil does leak. It, the problem is, is that that leaks all year, and then you get this in, in addition to that, plus the fact that it was all concentrated in one small area and you begin to see the environmental impacts of it. So anyway, yes, it is kind of hard. That's why I put that footnote on there to kind of give it, to kind of give it uh, a, a scale. A staggering, like staggering scale. Their office, the yeah, it was a little, I, I went to Clash the Press for a few weeks, just yeah. knowing, knowing that was out there. And, and knowing they, they, they were, I don't think willfully misrepresenting what was going on. I just think that they didn't, I don't, I don't think, I, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't, please. I don't think so. I honestly, I honestly got, I mean, think about the stat you just did. The stat you just did is done by maybe one in 10,000 people worldwide. I mean, honestly, non-parametric stat. Statistics itself is a rare enough course to take. Non-parametric stat? I'm, I'm one of three people in Oregon that actually teach this stuff in their classes. Because I see the point of it. I mean, when you have a six, a six an N equals six in your data set, highly skewed distribution, and you want to calculate an average, there's not much of a choice. You have to do it that way. But some people would just say, out of hell with it. Just take an average. Mm -hmm. I mean, take it an average the normal way, if you will, the, the, the parametric way. I would not do that. You would, you would grossly overestimate the amount of oil based on that distribution you guys had. It was highly exponential looking, tailed off this way. So I like to think they wouldn't willfully misrepresent the numbers. I, I would like to think that you would just be like, oh, I don't know, it's a lot of thousand. That kind of thing. Yeah, you know? Okay, blue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Blue. 
Bog hat. 1976. Yeah. That's what we're talking about right now. So anyway, the point is, is that I like to think that even if, regardless of whether or not they misrepresented, we still got a tool to kind of attack that. Just like doing your exam, which is great. So, okay, so that's that. Uh, project, yes, Project Thursday. I think I put a quiz up for, for Thursday, too. It's a repeater on, uh, I think it's a single prop Z, a Z test again. I put a second one up for that. Because... No, 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 because we're still, Alina, we're going to probably finish, actually, we are going to finish up T-testing today, but I didn't want to have a quiz on T-testing due the same day you had homework due on it. I want to make sure we got good. I'll put a T-test up for next week. Cool so far? All right. Man, my voice is cracking today. So let's go back. Let's go back to the beginning, hey, Susie. Let's go back to the beginning of hypothesis testing. I want to kind of give a, an overview of where we are and where we're going to head in the last three weeks we have together. Because it is, it is really a continuum of what we already started. And now that you're understanding what p-values are and what they imply, all we've got to do is see how to sausage grind data into a test statistic. You guys now know what a test statistic is and the corresponding p-value. Whether you do it parametrically or non-parametrically is irrelevant. You've got a curve, and a test statistic falls on the curve, and how far it is away from zero gives you some indication of how unusual it is. We can, do that. We can take all kinds of different data and make it fit on their kinds of curves and deal with them. So hypothesis testing, let's give a little overview, falls into some different flavors. Two flavors we've seen already. And a third we're about to kind of get into today. We have single parameter. Now this is the word parameter used in the old sense, in the old sense that you used it back in 243, not the idea of a parametric test, which is a bit of a confusing use of that word. This is the idea that you're trying to test either a proportion, either a proportion or an average in a population either a proportion or an average. So you're trying to, to decide if one of these things has changed. In the exam you just submitted, you were dealing with proportions. Yes, dealing with a, if a percentage or a probability or, or a proportion had changed significantly, or if it's, if it's arguably the same as it was. We're in the middle of testing averages now. We're in the middle of testing averages now. I'll put underneath the little letters, Z is the test use, the normal distribution for parametric analysis. And what letter do we use for averages, which we'll see more of today? T. Yes, you've got it, the t-test. That's what I want to continue today. And I think we'll have time at the end of the day maybe to go back and forth between these two things. Now, I want to, I want to stop here just for a moment. We, we collected some great data last time, some fantastic data on uh, thumb versus finger times looking at a, a swimming race, which is trying to, we tried to answer the question, is there a difference between thumb times and finger times when you're, when you're watching a, a swimming race go by? And, and, and parents were, were concerned that their kids were getting shorted or whatever, that because some parents were using thumbs, some parents were using fingers. That may have seemed like there were two different averages we were talking about. There was an average thumb time and an average finger time. But we decided that there weren't really two averages, there were really one average. It was the average difference between the thumb and the finger time. And I think we made a statement in class, it's, it'll be, I didn't get a chance to upload the video, actually it's uploading as we speak right now. But the difference is not that we were looking for a difference of two averages, the average of the thumb and the average of the finger. We weren't looking for the difference of the averages. We were looking at the average of the differences, which I know sounds like Dr. Susie. My name is Sam, I have three eggs and ham. But it does mean two different things, right? If you're looking at the difference of two averages, that's two different tests. But if you're looking at the average, singular, of a difference, that's one test. And we, we looked at a couple different reasons, and I said that the video will be posted later. One of the reasons was the fact that we don't lose confidence by doing it that way. And the second one was that, as Michael, I believe you pointed out, you keep the association between the two data sets, which is what you want. So I want to put a little side note here for mu, for a single parameter average test. There are those that are called matched pair tests. Matched pair tests. That's what we were doing on Thursday. And we'll do a second one today. If you, your, your data sheet has some more fun data we'll play with on there as well. Matched pair test. That's a subset of these guys. And there are also just simple ones that have mu equals. I'll, I'll, I'll just call that, you know, mu equals some value. Mu equals. 
some value. And those are, those are very, very similar to these. You know, the average IQ was 100, for example. The average weight of a Del Taco half pound bean and cheese burrito is half a pound. You, know, you have a given number, 0 0.5, 100, whatever the number is. We know that for years and years and years and years and years, the average weight of, a, of, a, uh, of an American adolescent male between ages 12 and 15 is, I don't know, 110 pounds or something like that. You, you, have, this, you have this given value. Yeah, the given value that you put in there, which is very similar to these guys here. But then there's this little subset, this matched pair. I want to finish up what we did in class. We started in class on, uh, on Thursday, collected some good data from that. And I want to do a second example of this to show you the difference between how you set the data up. There's no difference whatsoever in the tests you run. They're all t-tests. They're all t-tests. But it's just how you process the data to get it into that form. That's what I want to make sure you guys understand before we uh, get out of here today. Cool? Let's relook, relook. Let's look again. Let's relook. Let's relook again. Let's be, let's be completely and totally redundant. Let's relook again a second time. <laughs> totally redundant. At the swim, thumbs, thumbs versus fingers on a stopwatch. Stop has an O in the name. Stopwatch. Is there a difference? Is there a difference if you use your thumb versus your finger in stopwatch data? Let, let me throw my data up, make sure I still have it. I should, I don't think I erased anything over the weekend. This is the last data set I played with. What do we got here? Stat edit. Also, yeah, it is gone. You guys still have your data, correct? Yeah. May I borrow a TI right quick? Here you go, Sean. And overwrite. Thank you, Michael. I can I can stick it in here real quickly. Copy it over. Let me pause this. There you go.